Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today, we're going to be talking about the new album from Pusha T, titled My Name Is My Name. I gotta be honest with you guys here. It took a lot for me to get remotely excited about this album. That's why this review is as late as it is. Hell, if I'm gonna be completely honest, it is taking a lot to get for me to get excited about Pusha T as an artist altogether, which is really frustrating because everything I've heard about the guy suggests that I would actually somewhat like him as a rapper. According to the majority of the critical press, he's one of the few artists Kanye West signed to his label Good Music, who actually was any good. And from what I liked from Cruel Summer last year, I I think I liked what he put on the table. I remember thinking he was better than Two Chains and Big Sean on Mercy, but then again, that's not hard by any stretch of the mind. And it brings to mind a big problem that I've had with rap music recently. It seems that everybody's critical standards have just dropped for their technical rhyming abilities. And while my standards, they just haven't moved all that much. I look at rappers who would have been laughed out of the rap game in the 90s or even the 2000s for sloppy flow or bad lyrics, and now they're somehow getting critical claim when their subject matter or their technical skills just don't back it up. So thus, when I'm confronted with a rapper like Pusha T who gets critical acclaim because he's got a good flow and he's got interconnected, well-written lyrics, well, I'm left a little unmoved because... Well, that's my standard for good rap music. If you can't do that, I have a hard time understanding why you were given a career in the first place. If you just deliver that without adequate subject matter behind it or anything interesting to say, I don't really have much to praise here besides just basic competence. Congratulations, you do the very basics of your job. Now, to be fair to Pusha T, I have admit I haven't had much of a chance to peruse a lot of his material outside of a few good guest verses. So I figured now would be a very good time to take a look at his big solo debut, overloaded with guest stars as it is. If he's looking for an opportunity to establish his presence and cred in the industry, this long-delayed album titled My Name Is My Name should be worth something, right? Ugh. Well, I'm not going to say that this album is totally worthless, but there's not a whole lot I can say that I really liked about this album, My Name Is My Name. It is, somewhat surprisingly, rather characteristic of recent debut hip-hop albums with the exception of Kendrick Lamar. Initially focused on establishing the uh, main performer before surrounding him with an um, abundance of unneeded and unwanted guest stars, completely lacking in any sort of coherent focus, and wildly uneven when it comes to quality. And it's surprising because Pusha T has been in the rap industry for a fair, fair length of time, over 10 years. So it's a little astounding and worrisome that his debut album is as messy as this one is. To put it another way, you can tell that it was recorded over a period of almost two years and then somewhat cobbled together into something that was guaranteed to sell. But okay, look, Pusha T is more of a singles artist, so let's set aside album coherency and talk about the songs and Pusha T himself. I'll say this for the guy, his delivery is often quite strong with a lot of slick bravado that he can back up with good wordplay. Sure, he's arrogant, but unlike, say, Jay-Z, he sounds like he's a little bit more invested in his material, which does a fair bit to make him actually compelling. His flow is reminiscent at points of Kanye, but that's not a bad thing, because Pusha T often has good enough rapping to back it up. In fact, the rapper I was reminded most of wasn't Kanye at all. But Jada Kiss, it's kind of amazing how much their voices and delivery occasionally sound alike. And once I noticed it, I, I couldn't stop noticing it. That's all I could see. And you know what? Since I like Jada Kiss, that wasn't exactly a bad thing. And you know what? I'll say this for Pusha T as well. You can tell that he puts a lot of effort into his rhymes and wordplay. From a technical standpoint, Pusha T is a very strong lyricist with a good flow and the technical skill to have his rhymes flow naturally together with good concepts and double entendres flowing from line to line. And really, it's a sad fact that on that basis alone, a lot of people are going to fall head over heels for this guy when Pusha T is really only doing what used to be standard in hip-hop music. But it doesn't help matters that there are only a few glimmering points in this album where this album really produces something that's hard-hitting or potent, or moments that rose above the admittedly excellent setup. The moments that worked best for me were on Hold On, where he delivers a blisteringly strong verse against racial profiling, in the album highlight, Nostalgia, where he takes what might have been another verse glorifying drug dealing and throws whole new waves of context and deeper meaning through it through contrast with Kendrick Lamar's verse exploring life from an addict's point of view. It's a powerful setup and it works very well. And on the topic of Kendrick Lamar, I should mention that there are some surprisingly good guest contributions to this album as well. Rick Ross probably delivers the best verse of his career on this album with Hold On, 
with way more inflection and emotion and actual feeling than I've ever heard from him. And unsurprising, Kendrick Lamar continues to prove that he's one of the best new talents in the rap game right now. And on the hooks, well, The Dream was okay with 40 Acres. That's honestly a song I thought would land better than it did. But the real surprise here was Chris Brown, of all people, on Sweet Serenade. Sure, his voice was might be buried under a ton of audio effects, but as much as I'd like to deny it and continue blasting the guy, he does deliver a good chorus here with some, with some appropriate emotional context. If only the rest of the guest stars were anywhere close to being as good. Future continues to waste everybody's time on pain. Jeezy tries to deliver on no regrets, but doesn't do very much. And as for 2 Chains and Big Sean, dear Christ, their collaboration with Pusha T called Who I Am, it's a disaster of a track. None of the rappers are anywhere close to their A game, including Pusha T, who just sounds lazy on this track. But 2 Chains and Big Sean continue their trend of ruining songs from good rappers by delivering verses that would have been got themselves laughed out of a middle school talent competition. And yet, believe it or not, that song isn't the worst on the album. No, that comes courtesy of guest star Kelly Rowland and is titled Let Me Love You. Now, if you've seen my Danny Brown review, you probably are aware that I'm not the biggest fan of gangsta love songs. And this song in particular is precisely why. Pusha T sounds practically asleep, the rhyming is lazy, Kelly Rowland contributes nothing all that special, and the entire song feels like an unnecessary throwback to the early 2000s that nobody wanted. So what about the instrumentation? Well, what about it? It's barely here, it's very minimalist and sparse in order to focus all the attention on the rappers in question. Honestly, there are a few moments I liked a fair bit, mostly courtesy of production work from Hudson Mohawk and Pharrell, and occasionally Kanye himself, who actually provides a significant amount of restraint and stays off the tracks for the majority of the part. But for the most part, the instrumentation is watery, it's bleak, and while it sounds expansive, it doesn't really use the soundscape particularly well. It doesn't really grip me in the same way that Drake instru Drake's instrumentation did. Of course, the loud squeal of the guitar on Nostalgia does add something to the unique flavor and texture of the album, as does the acapella elements and snitch. But really, just not a lot stood out here for me in a way that was all that special. But if anything, that's kind of my feeling about the entire album as itself. It feels distinctly less than the sum of its parts, and considering the huge influx of guest stars and writers and producers on My Name Is My Name, it's a little distressing that with all of that effort and all that talent, they couldn't bring together something that was just a little bit stronger. I'm left wondering what on earth Pusha T was trying to say with this album, if anything, at all, which leads to my biggest issue with this record. Outside of Hold On and Nostalgia, this album doesn't seem to do much else that we haven't seen done better elsewhere. Pusha T is a great technical lyricist, sure, but without having anything interesting to say outside of the traditional cash money hose anthems and the constant references to the fact that he used to sell cocaine, well, it just doesn't add up much to a unique or compelling personality. And look, I get that good music doesn't have to be about something original or have much of a focus. Hell, I can defend pop music on that standard. But to me, Pusha T seems to have delivered this album with a lot of well-crafted setup, but very few punchlines to make the best of that setup. In comparison with Kanye West, for instance, who is who I can admit and who Kanye himself has admitted is a weaker rapper who, on a technical basis at least, and who's delivered more bad lyrics on a few songs than Pusha T will ever write in his life. And yet Kanye West still has a ton of compelling, interesting ideas that he's trying to express without filter however he can. Pusha T's raps, on the other hand, come across as those like that of a workman. Competent, to be sure, but not all that special. So in the end, would I recommend this album? Ugh, this isn't an easy one to say because Outside of a few moments, it left very little impact on me. For what it is, My Name Is My Name is wildly uneven, with very good highs to be sure, but very, very deep lows. And in the end, I'm left without a lot of feeling towards this album at all. There's a lot of competence on display, and there are some great performances, but it ultimately adds up to very little, and I feel like I'm going to be generous here. I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10, and an extremely tentative recommendation. If you're a fan of Pusha T from back when with his days with clips, and you like his style and his wordplay, you'll find more of that here. But outside of that, there just isn't much. If you're just casually interested in this album, check out Hold On and Nostalgia, and maybe Sweet Serenade and 40 Acres. Outside of that, you're just not missing much. And Pusha T, while I like your flow and your wordplay, 
I really wish you would have had something more to say. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than I'd be more than grateful. Sorry about my voice. I'm a little hoarse and dealing with some congestion in my upper chest here. If there's anything else you'd like me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to take a look. Or if there's anything I may be able to do to improve my technical presentation, I'm more than willing to hear about it. Until then, see you next time.